Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle Emerson and I'm a fourth grade teacher from Maryland. In today's video, I wanted to give you an overview of how to use Padlet, which is basically an online digital bulletin board. Plus, I'm going to give you ideas of ways to use it with your students. Let's jump right into it. In order to access Padlet, you're just going to go to padlet.com, but I will also link it for you down in the description box. Then you're gonna to wanna to click on sign up for free. Personally, whenever I sign up for websites, I sign up with Google if that's an option because it just makes it easier since it's one less username and password that I'm trying to remember. So I'm gonna click on sign up with Google and I'm gonna go ahead and select my Google account. Once you have created your account, you have the option to create Padlets. Let's go over quickly the free version of Padlet versus paying the monthly fee. I personally have only ever used the free version. I have never upgraded. The only dip, well, maybe not the only difference, but the main difference is the free version limits you to three Padlets at a time. But personally, I just delete Padlets when I'm done with them and create new ones. So I never really need more than three at a time. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna be going through the free version of Padlet. Now, in order to create a Padlet, I'm just gonna click on make a Padlet and you will notice I have eight different options. I'm actually gonna go through each option with you and give you an idea of how you could use this with your students. So let's start with just the wall. The wall is gonna create this brick-like layout, meaning if one post is longer, then over on the side, it might fill with two shorter posts, and they're going to piece together like bricks. So rather than being in strict columns and rows, they're gonna kind of piece together based on size. So in order to create a wall, I'm just gonna click select and it's going to automatically choose a background to give my Padlet a title, but I can go in and edit any of that. Now, one way I really like to use the wall Padlets is by doing something I call peach and pit with my class. So peach is something good and pit is something not so good. Typically on Monday mornings, I will share a peach and pit Padlet with my students and I will have them share something good from their weekend and something not so good. So let's go ahead and make a peach pit Padlet. I'm going to title it peach and pit. I can give a description if I want. So I might tell students create a post to share one peach, good thing, from your weekend and one pit, not so good thing. Okay, then I have the option to select an icon, which is basically an emoji. I'm gonna go ahead and find the peach icon so I can go to the food section and there's the peach. All right, that looks good. You also can add your own, but for time's sake, I typically just choose an emoji. I'm gonna click the back arrow in order to go back. The next option is to be able to personalize the URL. You can do that if you want, but I already mentioned that I typically make a Padlet and then delete it and make a new one and, and delete it. So I don't really bother with customizing the URL. I'm just gonna leave the one that is already there. Next is the appearance section. So I can change the background. Now I have the option to use solid colors. So since I'm doing peach and pit, I might try to find kind of a peachy color, like maybe that looks pretty good. You also have different gradients, textures and patterns, pictures, or you can add your own. So you can customize this as much as you want. Now I'm gonna go back. You can choose a light or dark color scheme. I usually just choose the light one. You also can choose the font, but again, I typically just keep it as the first one for time's sake. Now you have some posting settings. So you have the option to display the author name above each post. Personally, I don't ever worry about that because I just share the link with my students and so they're not logged into Padlet and it's not gonna show their name anyway. It's just gonna show as anonymous. But if you have your students actually, I guess, create Padlet accounts, honestly, I'm not really sure what exactly they have to do, but you can have it display the author name or you can just have it off and then have your students list their name, which is what I have my students do. You can choose the post position. So if you want new posts to appear first or last, I typically have new posts appear first. You also can allow other people to comment on the posts. I typically keep the comments off just because you never really know what your students might comment, but I do allow them to like the posts. You also can have them vote on them, star them or grade them, but I usually like the like option. 
So I'm gonna go back. You also can choose to have to approve any posts before they go on. So if you're worried what your students might put on there, you probably would want to have that turned on. I had that turned on at the beginning when I was using Padlets with my students, but since then I've been able to have that option off and I've never had a problem. You also can have it filter profanity, but hopefully that shouldn't be an issue. But depending on the grade level, you know that might be an issue for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and it says I'm all ready, I can start posting. So in order for you or students to make a post, they're gonna click on the plus sign down in the bottom corner. Typically, I have my students put their name as the title. So I'm gonna put Mrs. Emerson, and I always like to make a post first on the Padlet as an example for my students. It kind of models for them how I want them to structure their post. So I might put Peach, I watched my favorite show on Netflix. And maybe my pit is that it rained all weekend, so I couldn't go outside. Now those are the basic like text posts, but students also have the option to upload pictures, link to things, search on Google, snap images, um, capture video, audio, screen, drawing, like there's so many different options. So you can give students, you know, guidance and say, I want you only to use text and pictures, or I want you to record a video. That's totally up to you. Um, I do really like the draw option though, because it's a great way to differentiate. So students can actually draw right on their screen, hit save, and then it will post that as a post, which is really nice because it just gives them a little bit more flexibility. That's looking pretty good. I am gonna go ahead and just leave that there. You can see here is how students will like each other so they can click on the little heart. I would then share this Padlet out with my students to start adding their own. In order to do that, I'm gonna come up to share. And then this is where I can adjust the settings as needed. So I typically keep it secret. That means only people who get the link are going to be able to access it. People aren't gonna be able to search and find it. And I want visitors to be able to write. So this is kind of like with Google where you have view settings or edit settings. In order for my students to actually edit the Padlet and add their own posts, I need to make sure that they have the right setting. But if I need to change that, I can do so here. So if I wanna make it completely private, I can. Um, if I wanna make it public, I can. And then I also have the option to give viewers read access, write access, or edit access. So I always choose the write access, that way my students can't delete the Padlet or make any of those like settings that I have edited, they can only make posts. So I'm gonna leave that there, go ahead and hit back. Now I have the options for actually sharing it. Typically, I just copy the link by clicking copy link to clipboard and I paste it in the chat on Google Meet. You also have the option to share on Google Classroom, but typically for me, that takes a little bit longer, so I would rather just copy the link and drop it directly in the chat. But you have different options here based on how you want to actually share with your students. And at the end, because I mentioned I will oftentimes delete these Padlets, if you want to keep a record of the Padlet, you can actually save it as an image or a PDF, and then you can always bring it back up and still be able to view it, but you still have the ability to make more Padlets because you've deleted the actual Padlet. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> so that's the first one, that is the wall option. And like I mentioned, I really like to use that for Peach and Pit. Now, since this is a Padlet I typically reuse every week, once I am done using it for that week and my students have all added their posts and we've gone over them, I typically come up to the three dots and then I will go ahead and clear all posts. And it's gonna ask me if I'm sure, I'm gonna hit clear. And then that's going to keep all of the same settings, it's just going to erase all of the posts. So that's an easy way to reuse a Padlet if you're gonna use it again and again and again. So let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna click back on Padlet to take me back. You can see this Padlet is now here. If I am done with it, I can archive it or delete it. So archive it is like, it's gonna take it off my main screen but I still have access and delete it is gonna get rid of it altogether. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this Padlet. It's gonna ask me to type in this code just to verify, click delete, and now it's gone. I'm gonna click on make a Padlet again. And the next option is Canvas. So Canvas is gonna allow you to move the posts around and make connections between posts. I really like to do this for things like brainstorming or if I'm gonna have my students complete some type of like a number talk. So I'm gonna show you what that would look like. I'm gonna go ahead and hit select. 
And again, it gives it a random title and background. I'm going to name this target number. So this is something that I do with my students in order to practice like number fluency. And for the description, I might say, create the number 525 as many ways as possible. Once again, I can edit the icon and all that. I'm gonna skip over that for now since I've already shown it to you, but I am going to change my background. Maybe I'm gonna choose like a cork board. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next and start posting. I might go ahead and make a post with the number, so 525, and I might put that like in the center of the screen. As my students add different ways to make that number, so different equations or representations, I can then move them around on the screen and start making connections. So let's go ahead and put some on as an example. I might have a student who puts 500 plus 25. I might have a student who puts um, 550 minus 25. I might have a student who maybe draws it with base 10 blocks. So I'll go to draw and maybe they do 500. Okay, this is super sloppy, but we're just going to go with it. Uh, three, four, five, two tens, and one, two, three, four, five ones. Save. Okay, maybe I have another addition equation. So maybe 200 plus 300 plus 25. Okay, you get the point. So now I have some of these different ones on here. As I have a discussion with the class, we might start moving them around and grouping them. So we might put both of the addition ones together, and then we might put the subtraction ones together, and then we might put the representation with base 10 blocks over here. Then as we start making these connections, if I click on the three dots and choose connect to a post, I can click on another post to connect it. So now, even as I move this one apart, it's going to connect them together and have that arrow. So it allows you to start making connections as students are brainstorming or solving a problem like this. So I really like this option for students to be able to see connections between their thinking. I'm gonna go back to Padlet. Once again, I'm going to delete this one, type in the code and hit delete. So let's click make a Padlet again. The next option is a stream. So a stream is going to look almost like a Facebook page or an Instagram feed. It's going to have the post just listed one after another after another. So a really fun way to use this would be having students create an Instagram account or a Facebook account for a character from a book. For example, let's say students were reading Matilda. I don't know, the first book that came to mind. So Matilda and We'll just go ahead and take that out for the wallpaper. Um, let's see, if we're making a Facebook, Facebook is like that blue color. I might choose a blue so it kind of looks like Facebook. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the settings. Now as I add the posts, maybe they're going to have, I could even structure it like a journal. So maybe this is going to be Sunday, November 8th and then they could type in that post or that journal entry for that character. So I'm just gonna put type text here. They could add an image if they want, but when I add another post, it's going to now have it on top. In the settings, you can change whether you want new posts to go underneath or on top. I had it set for the top. Once again, type text here. They might add in images, so I might search um, library, because Matilda does a lot of reading, so maybe she posts something about the library, it's going to insert that or not, or not. Okay, let's try that one again. <laughs> We're going to go to edit, I'm going to take out that picture, let's pick a different library, post, let's try this one. There we go. So again, these posts are just gonna stack on top of each other, and this is a great way for students to show their understanding in a variety of ways, because they can add drawings, videos, pictures, text, and so on. You could do this not only with a character from a book, but you could do it on a scientist you're learning about, or maybe a historical figure that you're learning about. There are a lot of different options for using this with your students. I'm gonna go back to Padlet, and I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. Okay, I'm gonna make a new Padlet, and this time I'm going to select the grid. 
So the grid is very similar to the wall, except instead of having that brick-like format, the grid is gonna keep everything in rows. So the first row is gonna have the first four or five posts, even if they're really long, the next row is gonna start under the longest post. So there will be a little bit more empty space in this one. They're not gonna all fit together like bricks, but it might be a little bit easier to keep track of the post by having them in clear rows. Personally, I really like to use this for different Friday prompts that I give my students. So for example, Famous Friday. And maybe for the icon, I pick a camera find like a picture, yeah, something like that. And then for the wallpaper, maybe I choose a picture. I think there's one down here, it's called like paparazzi. Y'all can tell I use this a lot, the fact that I have the names memorized. Hold on, yep, there it is. So it kind of looks like, almost like pictures, I don't know, like a flash. Um, and then in the description, I would tell students, if you could meet any celebrity, historical figure, or other famous person, who would you meet and why? So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like as you start creating the post. So let's say this is student one. I would meet Oprah. Okay, let's say student two. I would meet the rock. I don't know. I'm just adding random ones in there. Uh, student three. I'm going to just type some random things so that you can see that it's longer. Let's go ahead and do another one. I would meet a YouTuber. I don't know. I'm just picking random things. And then now you'll notice this post has gone underneath. So let me go ahead and add student five and oops. Let's say they type random stuff. Okay, if I go back and edit this post and I make it even longer, you'll notice that the one underneath just keeps moving down. So it keeps everything in nice clean rows and it's just a little bit easier to be able to keep track of. So for this, I love to give my students, like I said, prompts on Friday where they just respond to some kind of question that I give them. And I love for them to be able to read each other's responses and it helps to build that classroom community. So I really like to use this format for my Friday posts. Okay, we're gonna go back to Padlet and we're going to delete it once again. Okay, we're gonna make a new one and this time we're gonna choose Shelf. So Shelf is going to automatically create columns and it's gonna allow you to kind of categorize the posts into the columns. I actually like to use this in real time with my students by creating a column for each different question that I'm going to ask them. So maybe this is going to be book reflection. And let's say my students have read a book and they are going to be answering different questions in order to reflect on the book. So I can name the first column with the actual question. So I don't know, I'm making this up. Who was your favorite character and why? So now when students add their responses, they're going to add it underneath of this column. So maybe student one, I liked blah, 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 because, and then student two is gonna add their response. I liked yada, 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 and so on and so forth. So they're just adding them all under that one column. When I'm ready to ask them the next question, I can add a column and I can ask them a new question and have them respond there. So maybe my next question is, if you could change the ending of the story, would you change it or not? Why? I don't know. Save. And again, they'll be able to respond to that question. So this is a great way to be able to have students engage one question at a time, and you can use this for any subject area. We're going to go ahead back to Padlet again, and we're going to delete this one so we can make a new one. Again, you can have up to three. I'm just deleting them as I go. The next one is back channel. So back channel is almost like a chat format. So Maybe this is going to be math questions. We all know that we have those students who sometimes don't wanna ask questions during class, but they're more likely to ask questions if it's anonymous and they don't have to ask in front of the entire group. So I might say, if you have any questions about this math unit, post them here. 
and I'm going to post it. Notice mine is on the right hand side because I, the creator of the Padlet, have posted. Any students who post a question, it's going to show up on the other side, but it's going to show up as anonymous. So no one's going to know who asked the question. So this might be a continuous Padlet that I have throughout the marking period. So anytime students have questions, they can post them on here. This might be a Padlet that I actually share out on Google Classroom, and that way students constantly have access to it. But rather than asking their question on Google Classroom, where everyone can see who asked it, they can ask it on here, where where it's more anonymous and their classmates aren't going to know who's asking. So that was pretty basic. I'm going to go back and since we're toward the end of making our padlets, I'm going to just leave that one there. I am going to make a new one and this time I'm going to choose map. I really like to use this map format when I'm trying to discuss places during social studies. So I'm going to go ahead and just close. I'm not going to worry about renaming it. Um, actually, I want to go in and show you. Hold on one second. I want to show you the different map styles. So there are some that are more like realistic, like the usual, or if you want it in black and white, you can choose silver, you can choose the dark one, but there also are ones that look different based on what you're using it for. So typically I just use the usual, but what I really like is you have the ability to mark different locations on the map. So we've been working on explorers and talking about explorers and I've realized my students don't have a good sense of geography. So as we discuss where the explorers left from, I can mark those places on the map and show them. So if I click on the plus sign, it will allow me to actually search for a place. And I can be very specific with an actual address or I can put in the name of like a state or a country. So I might put Spain and it's gonna go ahead and mark Spain. If I zoom out, gotta zoom out a lot because it went all the way in. There we go, so it's got Spain marked. Then maybe if I want to mark, oh, well, this explorer landed in the Bahamas. I can then add one for Bahamas. And it helps my students to really be able to see where these things are taking place. So anything that you're doing like geography wise, highly recommend using the map in real time. You can mark those locations and your students have a better idea of where things are taking place. And you can add in like files. So you could add in like a PDF of an article maybe, or you can add in a link to a website or you can add in an image and you can make your map like highly interactive and it can be something that students can look back on throughout the unit. Okay, we have one more to go through. I'm gonna click back on Padlet and this time we are gonna create a timeline. So I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna just close out of that. You will notice the timeline is down at the bottom. When I click on post, it's gonna go ahead and mark it on the timeline. So this is great for marking events in a story. So maybe in sequential order, you wanna mark what has happened in the story. Or again, if you're discussing these like historical events, you can actually create a timeline so students have a better visual representation of what's happening. So this might be like first, and then students can type what happened in the story. So this happened in the story. Okay, if I wanna create a new post, I can choose to add before or after that post. So maybe I wanna add after, so next, this happened in the story, and so on and so forth. So now I can add an event in the middle of those, before that one or before the first one. So this can even be something as you're reading a book, you can put events on there. And then if a book has like a flashback, you can add that event prior to where you had added the first one. So it's very versatile and allows you to really manipulate it as you go. It's not like you have to start with the first event or have to start with the last event. You can really change it and your Padlet can evolve as the assignment evolves. So that is it. Again, that's just your basic overview of using Padlet. I showed you the main features that I use. There are definitely other features and other ways to use it. I just wanted to kind of spark some ideas ideas within you all and hopefully inspire you to be able to use this with your students. I would love to hear from you down in the comments. How are you using Padlet with your students? How are you adapting it to be used in different subject areas? I would love for us all to help each other because goodness knows we all need some help right about now. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and share it out with your teacher friends. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos and the notification bell. <laughs> and as always, thank you for watching watching. I love you all so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.